Good morning guys, this is Vimal here and welcome back to another video on my channel. So today's video is going to be super special because I'm back with a brand new PC build video. So initially I was thinking of making a PC of around you know 50, 60,000 rupees and that to a gaming PC. But I've seen that a lot of you guys were commenting and told that you guys asked me to make a budget PC first, you know, around 25 to 30,000 rupees. That's why I had to bring down the budget and make this 25 to 30,000 rupees super budget PC build. So this is also a gaming PC guys. It's a 720p gaming PC. And in this budget, I'll be building the best possible PC you can make. So this will be an RGB build. Yes, we'll be using some RGB fans as well. So I'll be giving you the best possible PC build with RGB as well as performance. So these are the components we'll be using today. Let me quickly show you one by one and then we'll talk about, you know, all the components and also I'll show you the assembling process. The first thing is guys, this will be an AMD build. So the processor I'm using is from AMD. This is the Ryzen, uh, this is a Ryzen 5 2400G. The thing is guys, I actually wanted to use a Ryzen 5 3rd gen, the 3400G, but I couldn't get the unit on time, you know, AMD couldn't send it to me on time. That's why I had to go with the 2400G. But if you are having a little more budget, you can spend 3000 rupees more and get the 3400G. That is a pretty good CPU and much better than this one. But if you're a bit tight on the budget, go with the 2400G. This will be more than enough. So the best, the, the good thing about this processor is it also comes with built-in Radeon Vega graphics. So you don't need to buy a separate GPU, you know, again, separately. So yeah, it's a four core, eight thread CPU, which is clocked at 3.9 gigahertz frequency. So this is a CPU we'll be using. And the motherboard I'll be using is from Gigabyte. This is a AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi Edition motherboard. So it's a pretty good motherboard, guys. I've been using it in most of my PC builds in last one and two years. The reason I'm going with this one is, see, it's a 350 series motherboard, right? So it's a old model one, but uh, you know, since it's an old model, the price has come down to around like 6,500 right now in the market. And for that price, this thing offers like pretty good features. It's a gaming edition motherboard, has very good quality components on it, a lot of pretty features and also has RGB lighting plus built-in Wi-Fi. For 6,500, what more can you ask for? But if you have a little more budget, I would say go for the latest one, the 450 series motherboards, uh, because they directly support the third gen Ryzen CPUs. On this one, you have to update the BIOS before you can install the third gen Ryzen CPUs. So yeah, that was about the motherboard. And what else should we talk about? Talking about the RAM, let me tell you about the RAM. The RAM I'll be using for this build is from Corsair. This is a Corsair Vengeance, you know, DDR4 8GB RAM stick. So I'll be using a 8GB RAM stick in this build. I would suggest you to go with a dual channel RAM guys because you know dual channel offers you better performance. So if you're going for 8 GB, you know, select two 4 GB RAM sticks in dual channel configuration or if that is not possible, go for this 8 GB one. Or if you have a little more budget, I would say go with two 8 GB RAM sticks, you know, 16 GB configuration offers very good performance. See, so yeah, that was about the RAM sticks. We'll be talking about the prices at a later part in the video. So don't worry about the prices. I'll tell you everything step by step. Then talk, coming to the storage, uh, I'll be using an SSD. Uh, coming to SSDs, guys, SSDs are pretty cheap nowadays. If you go for a 250 GB SSD, no matter any brand, say ADATA or anything, you'll get them for around like 2,500, 2,600, and that is more than enough. Uh, so you can go with an SSD combined with a 1 TB hard disk from Seagate. For this build, I'm only using a 250 GB SSD. And coming to power supply, for this sort of build, I would say, a 350 watt power supply is more than enough because we're not doing any overclocking or anything, right? But I don't have a 350 watt power supply or even 400. That's why I went with the 450 watt power supply from Cooler Master. There is actually more than enough. So yeah, this is the power supply I'll be using, the MWE 450. So this is an 80 plus budget friendly power supply from Cooler Master. And what else is left? Uh, yes, talking about the cabinet. Initially, I planned on using a very budget friendly case around 2000, 2500 rupees. But again, I thought if you spend a little more like 1000 rupees extra, you'll get a beautiful cabinet with a tempered glass panel. And that is why I went with Deep Cool's Matrix 55. It's a very beautiful looking cabinet on a budget, guys. You know, it's got beautiful tempered glass panel on the front, on the side as well, and also comes with a built in RGB LED light strip. This costs only around like 3600 rupees, I guess, in the market. And yeah, it's a pretty good case. But if you don't want to use any RGB components or don't want show put up, want to reduce the budget, 
uh, you, that's your wish, uh, it's up to you. You can spend, you know, like 2000 and get a simple cabinet. And, f and to decorate this cabinet, you know, I'm using these special fans that I actually ordered from Banggood. So I got these fans from China, they are RGB fans and can also be controlled with a wireless remote provided in the box itself. I've got six fans in this box, so I'll be fixing them, all of them in this PC. Alright, so these are the components that we'll be using in today's PC build guys. And the complete budget, you know, total budget will be somewhere around like 28 to 30,000 rupees. Okay, so then let's get started with the assembling. Assembling a PC is very simple guys, there are no complications involved anywhere. You just have to watch my video step by step and you'll be able to do that in no time. So the first thing that you need to do in this process is to install the CPU on your motherboard. Installing a CPU is very simple, you just have to match this gold triangle on top of the CPU with this engraved triangle on the AM4 socket. So check the direction for that and gently drop it in the socket just like this. And that's it, just pull down this lever and lock the CPU in its place. So we are done with the installation of the CPU. Very simple, right? The next step in the process is to install the cooler on top of the CPU. Since this is a budget build, we'll not be using any special air coolers or liquid coolers. We'll be just using the simple stock cooler that we got free with the CPU. But I am not using that stock cooler that I got with the 2400G. To make this video a bit more colorful and interesting, I have replaced that with this RGB Wraith Prism cooler that I got with 2700X. So yeah, one more thing before installing the cooler, always make sure to apply thermal paste on top of the CPU. Since this stock cooler already comes with an applied layer of thermal paste, I am not applying again on top of the CPU. Just align the cooler like this, place it on top of the CPU properly and lock it down in its place with this lever. And that is it guys, you're done with the installation of the cooler. And also you see this cable that is attached to the cooler. You need to connect this to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. So the next step we need to do is install the RAM on your motherboard. Installing RAM is very simple. Since we only have one 8GB DDR4 RAM stick, I'll be installing that in the primary RAM slot on my motherboard. Before installing, make sure to check the direction of the RAM and also the notch as well. So just put it like this in the slot and push it gently until the lever locks itself. And that's it, you're also done with the installation of the RAM. So we're almost done with the motherboard section guys. Now what we'll do is, we'll install the power supply in the cabinet. Because later, once after we fix the motherboard in the cabinet, it might get a bit congested and difficult to install the power supply. So let me first fix this. Place the power supply in the cabinet like this in its proper position. Now use some screws that are provided with the power supply itself and fix it to the cabinet. Just like this. So now that we are done with the installation of the power supply, now let's go ahead and install the motherboard. But before fixing the motherboard, make sure that you fix this IO shield to the cabinet. So just place it like this and push it until it locks itself. And that's it, IO shield has been installed. Now it's time to fix the motherboard in the cabinet. Take the motherboard, the one I am using is a mini ITX model so it's very compact in size. Take the motherboard and align it properly in the cabinet so that the mounts on the cabinet match with the screw holes on your motherboard. After that, you need to take some screws and start fixing your motherboard. Just go in a zigzag pattern and make sure that you don't over tighten the screws. Wow, now that was fast. We are almost done with the build guys, almost 70% done. Now all that is left to do is connect all the power supply cables to different components present in this cabinet. Like you've got to connect the motherboard, CPU and all that stuff. So let me show you that as well quickly. First, let's connect this 24 pin cable from the power supply. You need to connect this 24 pin cable to the 24 pin slot on your motherboard. Now this is quite important and essential because without this, your motherboard won't turn on. So after you're done with fixing the motherboard's 24 pin cable, next you need to connect this 8 pin CPU cable to the motherboard. As you can see, I've already connected it over here. So depending on the model of the motherboard you have, the position of connecting this cable may be different. So make sure to check that. And lastly, we are left with connecting this front I.O. panel connectors, which includes cables for USB 2.0 ports, USB 3.0 port, HD audio cable, and also connectors for power switch, reset switch, HDD, and power LED. Make sure to check the plus and minus before connecting. So as you can see, I've already connected all the cables to the motherboard, including the SATA cable for the SSD. All these cables have markings on them to let you know which cable is for what purpose and where to connect them properly. And yes, along with all these connections, don't forget about the RGB fans. The good thing about it is, the fans come with a dedicated fan speed and lighting controller. You just need to connect all the 6 fans to this controller and give power via a Molex cable from the power supply. And that is it, you can easily control all the lighting effects using just this remote. 
Well, that's pretty much it guys, we're completely done with the assembling. And this is how our budget gaming PC looks like. Looks clean, right? For a budget PC to look this good, not bad at all. Also guys, the cable management turned out pretty well on this. Even though it's a super budget build and we couldn't use any custom sleeved cables, I think I've done a good job keeping the PC clean and neat by you know organizing and doing the cable routing properly. Let's pile it on and see how this baby looks like. Holy smokes, are you guys looking at this PC? The RGB power level on this budget build is over 9000! Wow, I'm being very honest with you guys, I've never been in love ever before with a 30,000 rupees PC. Beautiful build. Now this definitely deserves a like and subscribe on our channel, so make sure to do that. Also, as I've told you before, the lighting on those RGB fans can be fully controlled using a remote. I'll show that to you in a moment. AMD's Wraith Prism RGB air cooler also adds a beautiful touch. That is the reason I wanted to use that particular stock cooler only. Let me quickly tell you the specs of the machine. The Ryzen 5 2400G we used over here is a 4-core 8-thread APU with a base clock frequency of 3.6GHz and a boost clock frequency of 3.9GHz. As I told you just now, this is an APU and comes with a built-in Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics and we'll be using that only for gaming to keep the cost minimum and within our budget. Talking about the RAM, the RAM I'll be using is a single 8GB DDR4 RAM from Corsair clocked at 2400 megahertz. On the storage side, there's a 250GB SSD and the whole build runs on a 450 odd power supply from Cooler Master. So this is how the complete setup looks after building. The whole assembling process took me around like 35 to 40 minutes, but if you're a beginner, I would suggest you guys to take your own time, do it slowly and carefully and watch this video 2-3 to three times to get a full clarity and then only proceed with your build. Alright, now let me show you the cool moon RGB fans lighting effects. You can easily control all the lighting effects using just this remote. You can set them to a fixed color mode of any choice from the available 12 buttons on the remote or either set them to the built-in RGB lighting presets, just like this. You can either go for the rainbow mode, dual color mode and a lot more built-in effects present on the remote. Ok, now let's jump into the gaming section. Let's play a game and talk about the performance of this build. We'll be playing Battlefield 1 which is a AAA title graphic intensive game and you can also monitor all the performance stats at the top left corner on the screen. And also for your info, we're playing this game at 720p resolution with all the graphic quality set to medium. So let's see how this PC handles the game. Not bad guys, on an average I was getting around 30 to 35 frames per second in Battlefield 1. And one more thing I have to mention is, I haven't overclocked anything on this PC. Everything was running at stock settings, but if you overclock, you'll definitely see a performance improvement and you'll get an average frame rate of around 40 frames per second, which is pretty decent at such a low price segment. And that too, this was a very graphic intensive game. If you play some normal or well optimized games for PC, you'll get much better results and even can play up to 1080p resolution. Apart from gaming, this PC build is also great for home purpose or even light office usage. It can easily handle a lot of tasks like photo editing as well as light video editing and feels decently fast and snappy for day to day usage. Ok, it's finally time to wrap it up, let me tell you about the pricing details. The Ryzen 5 2400G CPU costs around 9600 rupees. Gigabyte's AB350 and Gaming Mobo costs 6500 rupees. Corsair's Vengeance 8GB RAM costs 3000 rupees. A 250GB SSD will cost you somewhere around 2500. Talking about the power supply, Cooler Master's MWE450 is priced for 2400 rupees. Deepcool's Matrix 55 is available for 3700. And the Cool Moon's RGB fan set costs around 2700 rupees. So the total budget of this build comes down to 30,400 rupees. Also guys, I have a few suggestions which you can use to get better performance at the same price tag but at the cost of those beautiful RGB looks. You can opt for a much cheaper cabinet from Cooler Master or Corsair around 2000-2500 rupees and also by removing all those RGB fans, you can save up to 3500 rupees. And with that 3500, invest and get the latest Ryzen 5 3400G that will definitely improve the overall performance of your PC. So yeah, again the choice is all up to you, I leave that to you guys. 
Well, that was it for today. That was my video on the best gaming PC you can build under 30,000 rupees. Hope you all liked it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more new awesome videos. And I'll see you in the next one.